Hello chess fans, this is Rick from Chess to Impress with the second video on My Friend Has Won a Tournament. If you did not see the first video, you can find the link up here. It's about my friend, international master Hans Klip from the Netherlands, who won an international tournament in Vakerzee in Austria in August 2022. In the first video, I showed you Hans' four wins in the first seven rounds. The other games ended in draws, so Hans had five and a half points out of seven games with two rounds to go. In round eight, Hans faced a big challenge, the French-Ukrainian grandmaster Vladimir Okotnik was his opponent and Hans had the black pieces. As top players do, Hans prepared several opening setups before the game, but all his preparation went out of the window already on move one. Let's have a look at this round eight game. As mentioned, Hans had the black pieces, so let's look at the game from his perspective. And Grandmaster Okotnik opened with the d-pawn, a surprise on the first move as Okotnik mostly plays e2, e4, but d4 was his choice in round 8. So all Hans' opening preparation was out of the window. 1f5, Hans almost always plays the Dutch defense against 1d4, and there, there's no doubt that Okotnik had done some preparation against this. The first blow in this game went away of the Grandmaster, Opening preparation is quite important at this level. Let's look at the opening moves. Let's put them on the board. Knight c6, knight f3. Hans played e6. Okotnik castled. The bishop went on the long diagonal. And queen b3. And Hans found out after the game that this is one of Okotnik's favorite ways to play against the Dutch defense. But Hans did not know that during the game. Hans castled, bishop g5, that bishop got kicked, and took on f6. Queen takes, knight developed, and king h8. That's an interesting move. Hans explained to me that queen f7 had been played by black in a game from Okotnik from 2010. And also d6 on the 10th move instead of king h8. Is a known move. It was played in the Jan Timan versus Predrag Nikolic game, a game from 1997. But Hans played king h8. e4, d6, the rook got centralized. Hans pushed in the center, and now we see four captures. d takes, d takes, and also the players took on f5. Knight h4 and rook b8. Okotnik had played really quickly up to now. It turned out that he had had this position in a previous game. Hans was on new territory and here Hans told me that he now realized that this position is not much fun for black. Knight c4 was Okotnik's choice in a game played in 2002, a game Okotnik won. But the move he chooses in this game is even stronger instead of Knight c4, he took on c6. You have to recapture with the queen. Knight df3, e4 kicking the knight, knight d4 attacking the queen. And here, bishop takes d4 was Hans' choice, played after 40 minutes of thought. It is the best move in the position, although it's not so easy to part with your bishop on g7, who is an important defender for black's king. White recaptured and bishop e6 finally completing development on move 19. Attacking the queen and queen e3 was expected by Hans, but Okotnik played queen b4 instead, a move he played immediately. King g7 and now d5. This looks very strong, but it turns out that a calm move would have been stronger. Hans says a move like rook c1 would have been better than the very direct d4, d5. It's a fork, so you have to take the pawn and queen e7 check. Played after a long think, but it turns out that this idea does not work out for white. Hans interposed the rook and queen e5 check. You can also take on f5 first with check, king h7 and then save the queen, but then we get the same position as in the game. So let's stick with the game. Queen e5 check was played, king h7, and now Okotnik won the pawn back on f5. 
It's not a good move. Black is going to take over now. Rook e8. He's playing with all his pieces and is pushing white's queen back. Queen f4 and now queen g6. Again the best move. White is a problem. The knight is pinned and attacked twice. There is still a way out. Okotnik played knight h4, counter-attacking. Black's queen. Both queens are attacked now. And here rook takes f4 as possible, swapping the queens. Knight takes g6 and then rook back to f7, saving the rook. Knight f4 saving the knight. Bishop c4, that bishop was attacked there. Attacking the rook on f1, which has no squares, and then knight e2. Hans had calculated till here, but he had stopped one move too early. Because after rook d7, in fact, black wins in exchange here. The white pieces are tied up in a knot. The threat is rook d2 with a double attack, and there is nothing white can do to untangle his pieces. Black will win an exchange in all variations. So all that after knight h4 and then rook takes f4. In the game, Hans chose another move. He played queen g5, saving his queen. And now queen e3 was played. That's really the only move. All other moves are bad. And Hans had a very nice variation after queen c1. You may actually want to put the video on pause here and see what Hans had cooked up after queen c1. You can look for yourself and see how black wins here. I will show the variation now. Hans had planned to sacrifice the queen with queen takes h4, breaking down the defense around white's king. You have to take, otherwise you just lost a piece for nothing. And then rook g8 check. You have to make sure it is that rook and not the other rook that gives check. King h1 and e3 check. The bishop gives now check to the king. f3 is the only move and you take it with the rook. And this is a win for black. He's going to checkmate the white king. The nicest variation is queen c2 check. Check to black's king and then rook f5 counter check. And checkmate in a few moves from here. You can work those variations out for yourself. Very beautiful. So all that after queen g5 and then queen c1. But as mentioned, Okotnik played the queen to e3 and now the queen sacrifice is not there. Hans swapped the queens, rook takes and snacks a pawn on a2 in Bobby Fischer style. Remember the first game from Fischer's World Championship match against Spassky from 1972. If you don't know what I'm talking about, see the link up here. B3 from Okotnik. Is he trapping the bishop? The answer is no, because Hans played rook d8 here. And if you try to trap the bishop, there is rook d2 simply protecting the bishop. After rook d8, white played knight g2. Rook d3. Both players were getting low on time here. Knight f4 attacking the rook. Hans swapped a pair of rooks. And you can take on b3, but then there is rook b1. Winning the pawn on b7, activating that rook. So Hans did not take on b3, he played rook d7 instead. Knight e6, rook d3, check, king g6, and white takes on c7. Black takes on b3, protecting the b7 pawn. Knight f4, check, king f6, rook h7, attacking the h pawn. Hans gave a check, king g2 and a5 on move 38. Past pawns must be pushed also on international master and grandmaster level. Okotnik took on h6 with check, king g7 and he saved his rook, rook d6. a5, a4, move 40. Both players had reached the time control and now received 30 minutes additional time for the remainder of the game. Black has a winning position. G4, we see a bit of a pawn raise here. A3, in G5, and Bishop F7, making way for the A pawn and also giving the king some protection against white's charging pieces. Here, white played rook D7, and Hans explained that if white had played G6, 
then his plan was to take on g6, rook takes g6 check, white does one apiece, king f7, and the rook cannot go back to a6 now to stop the a-pawn, so rook g5 for example with the threat of rook a5 to stop the pawn but it's too late, a2, rook a5, and black gets a new queen. Rook takes, rook takes with a winning endgame. Black is an exchange up. So all that after bishop f7 and then g6. In the game Okotnik played rook d7. Hans kept pushing the a-pawn. g6. Can the king survive that? The attack from rook, knight and pawn. Hans calculated and said yes I can survive that. I can make a new queen because after rook takes f7 check there is king g8 and now white would love to play knight e6 and then there is a checkmate threat on f8 and also there is a perpetual check option with the rook. But what is the refutation of knight e6? Again put a video on pause, it is quite simple, what do you play here with black? You play queen a2 check and it's a double attack, winning the knight and there is no more trickery against black's king. So after king g8, knight e6 cannot be played. Okotnik played king h3, and now he's threatening knight e6. Rook g1, and again there's no knight e6 because this pawn falls. After rook g1, Okotnik brought the knight back, and Hans told me here if white has to bring the knight back, then it's clear that he is not going to save the game. Queen a2, knight h4, and Hans took the pawn on g6. And here white resigned and Hans had beaten the grandmaster for the tenth time in his career. If you take the rook, then the king takes the white rook. So this was a crucial win for Hans, beating grandmaster Okotnik with the black pieces. Hans now had six and a half points out of eight games and he expected the white pieces in the last round. But Hans was unlucky that he got the black pieces again in the last round against the young talent Lars Waffenschmidt, rated 2040. We had an Italian opening and Hans has just played c7, c6 on move 12 and offered a draw, which his opponent accepted after five minutes of thought. The position is equal, but as Hans explained to me, it's slightly easier to play for white. So Hans and also his opponent ended on 7 points out of 9 games. Fidemaster Florian Wagner won in the last round and also got to 7 points, but it turned out that Hans had won the tournament on tiebreak because of a better Sonneborn Berger score. To make the victory even sweeter, the last round was played on Hans' birthday. It has happened before that one of my friends won a tournament and each time it happens I feel like I've won a tournament myself. A very strange sensation, but also a cherished one. I'm very proud of my good friend Hans, with whom I've played so many tournaments around Europe. He's a brilliant, very creative chess player who loves complications and crazy positions. I could never play like him, but it's a privilege to watch his game from close proximity and hear him explain his games every night at the dinner table because that is the most enjoyable part of playing a chess tournament together with your friends. The dinner table with a chessboard in the middle and everybody takes turns to show the game they just have played. These are the final results of the Farkasé Open 2022. International master Hans Klipp has won the tournament. As you can see, he had a better tiebreak score on all three tiebreaks than the other players that finished on seven out of nine. Grandmaster Okotnik, who we just saw in action, finished in fourth place. And here we have the proud tournament winner, Hans Klip, winning the tournament on his birthday. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the Chess to Impress channel and please leave a comment. I will read them all and I will reply to them all. If you liked the video, it would be great if you could share it on social media by clicking the share button on YouTube. You can find me on Instagram, on Twitter and on Facebook. This is Rick for Chess to Impress. Thank you for watching.